In this video, I show you how to use GIMP. If you're new to the channel, please go down below and consider subscribing to the channel. And once you've done that, please go down below and consider leaving a like as well. And please do make sure you watch this video right until the end. Without any further ado, let's go and jump into this. Here we are on my desktop and just before I go and show you how to use GIMP, I want to quickly show how you can go and get it. If you've already got GIMP, you can go and skip this part of the video and there's going to be chapters on this video so you can see where we actually go and show you how to use GIMP. So if you haven't got GIMP, simply go and open up your web browser just like so and come to Google or any search engine you'd like. Then all you want to do is go and search for GIMP just like so, G-I-M-P, and go and search for it. Then make sure you come to GIMP.org, this is the official website, so make sure you come here. And then all you need to do is go and click on download just here, and it's going to go and take you to the download page. And we've got two different options here. You can also get GIMP on other OSs as well, such as Mac, but it's just not showing as I'm on a Windows computer. I recommend going and downloading it directly, so click here. And then all it's going to do is going to start the download and it's 245 megabytes. So just go and wait for this to finish. And then once it's gone and finished downloading, you then just go and install it. It's a really simple install. You literally just open it up and follow the installer instructions. And then it's going to be on your PC. And then I'll show you how you can go and use GIMP. So once you've gone and installed GIMP, then all you want to do is come down to the search icon down here and simply go and search for GIMP just like so. And as you can see, it's going to find the best match to so go and click here. Then it's going to go and start opening it up as you can see it may take a minute to load up especially on the first time as well as GIMPs that have been opened before. Then what you want to do is make sure GIMP is full screen and let's go and jump straight into this. So the first thing you want to do is make sure you've got all of our tools on the left hand side and the right hand side. If you're missing any of the ones I have all you want to do is go and click on this top bar up here and go and click on tools and you can add stuff like the toolbox um, and a few bits like that. But let's go and get straight into this. So let's go and create the project. So you want to come to the top left, so we've got file, and you want to go and click on create, just like so. And then as you can see, we've got this box up here saying create a new image, and you want to come down to image size. Now the image size is fully up to you. I recommend doing it in pixels though. I'm gonna keep it as 1920 by 1080, but you need to adjust the image size depending on what you're doing with the image. Then once you've got the right image size, you want to go and click on advanced options. So here, the main thing we want to look at is fill with. As you can go and use a transparent background if you want it to be clear, um, but you can also have a white background or a background color as well. But you can also go and change this a bit later on. For now, I'm going to go and use background color just like so, and I'm going to go and press OK. So as you can see, here we are with our background. Now, if you want to go and change your background color, it's super, super easy. All you want to do is come up to the left just up here. Then what you want to do is go and click on the color. Um, so I'm going to go and say choose a blue. I'm going to go and select the blue just like so, and then go and press OK. Then all you want to do is simply go and locate the bucket, which is just here as you can see, bucket fill tool. So click here, and then simply go and click, and it's going to go and change the background color. And of course, you can go and change it to any color you would like. Now, before we go and add anything else, one thing I always like to do is something called creating new layers. Now, a new layer is basically another layer of on top of the image. So if we want to go and change something later on, it's a lot easier to go and delete a layer than having to use the rubber tool and stuff like that. So come to the bottom right, and you want to come right to the bottom, and there's a little, little file icon just here with a plus. Click here. And then we're going to go and get this pop up about creating a new layer. So you can go and name it anything. I'm just going to name it layer. And you don't need to adjust any of these settings. So then go and press OK. So boom, we've now created this new layer. So what you want to do now is we're going to go and add some text. So to do this, all you want to do is go and press on the A in the toolbox. So click here and click on text tool. Then what we need to do is go and drag and we're going to go and create a text box. So you want to go and drag it to the size you'd like. So I'm going to drag it about here, then let go. And boom, here we are. So the first thing we're going to want to do is come over to the left and we need to go and change the color because currently if we type anything, it's not going to be visible because the background and the text are the exact same color. So go and click on color and I'm going to do this white just to make it sort of show out from the blue. So then I'm going to go and click OK. So I'm going to go and type something like example, just like so. You can also go and change the font as well and you can go and change the size and you can change the size either within the text box or you can come over here to the um, toolbox. So then I'm going to go and adjust the size of it to make it a little bit bigger, just like this. And that is perfect. So then if you want to go and move it, all you need to do is simply go up here to where we've got this cross with arrows on and it's called the move tool. So click here and then make sure you go and click on the text. So I'm going to go and hover right on the A, for example. Click here and then we can go and drag it to wherever we'd like. For example, I could go and do it right in the corner, but I want to go and be in the middle. So I'm going to go and have it just here. And then if you want to go and remove this line around the text, don't worry, when you save the image, it's not going to be there. But simply go and click on a different layer and the line's going to go and disappear. 
Now another awesome thing we can go and do in GIMP is go and adding shapes as well. So all you want to do is make sure you come and add a new layer by coming to the bottom right again and clicking on this create new layer and I'm going to go and press OK. Then all I'm going to do is I'm going to go and drag this below the text. So I'm going to just move it down like that. And then what you want to do is simply go to the top left in our toolbar. And as you can see, we've got a rectangle select tool and we've got an ellipse select tool as well. So with either of these, we can of course go and create squares and we can go and create circles. We can do most shapes. So I'm going to go and do an ellipse just like this, or I'm going to do a rectangle actually. So I'm going to click here and now I have this tool here. So what you then want to do is drag and hold to go and make the shape you'd like. So I'm dragging it out just like so. And I can do an adjust it to whatever I'd like. So I'm going to have it just around the example just like this. Then I'm going to go and release. Now if you want to go and change this, all you want to do is use these squares. As you can see, you can go and then adjust it again. Uh, really, really simple. Now, as you can see, we've got our shape, but it's just a line. It's got no color or anything like that. So then what you want to do is go and grab the bucket tool once again, just here. And you want to go and make sure you've got the right color. So I'm going to do this as a green. So I'm going to go and click on the white up here. And I'm going to go and select a green just like this. And then go click OK. Then I'm going to go and click within the rectangle just like so and click. And boom, there we go. It then goes and it adds the color. Now, another awesome thing we can go and do in GIMP is go and create a cool gradient background. So to do that, all you want to do is make sure the background layer is selected. Then what you want to do is come up here to the bucket and you want to hold and then go and make sure gradient is selected. So then as you can see, we then want to go and choose the color, which is going to be in the gradient. So to go and do that, you need to choose these two colors here. So I'm going to go and click on the blue and I'm going to do and do this as a white, just like so and click OK. And then all you want to do is click on the green and then I'm going to do this as a black and then go and press OK. So what we've done that, as you can see here, we, it gives us a preview of the gradient and what it's going to look like. Then what you want to do is simply go and drag for where you want the gradient. So if you want it from the top corner to the bottom, you hold it just like this and then go and release. And boom, there we go. As you can see, it then goes and creates a gradient. And of course, you can do this with any type of um, colors as well. And you can do it in different directions as well. Go and click on the movement tool and it's going to go and unselect that line. And there we go. So I'm actually quite happy with this image. So we've got two options when exporting and saving our images. So let's go and get into this. So what we want to do is come to the top left where it says file. And we're going to go and start off with exporting as. So this is exporting the image ready to be shared online or whatever you want to do with it. After you've exported the image, you will not be able to edit it. So if you want to go and edit it later, I'll be showing you how to do that in just a moment. All you want to do is go and click on export as, and then it goes and brings up a file explorer and you can go and choose where your image is going to be saved. So I'm going to go and save mine on my desktop. Then we want to go and change the name. So double click on untitled and it selects it. And then we can go and name it anything we'd like. So I'm just going to name this example just like this. And then once you've done that, you then want to go and click on select file type, click on that and it expands it. And we can go and choose what file type we want it to be. There are many different options. I personally just want to be PNG, so that's already selected. Um, but you can also use um, JPEG as well if you'd like to do that. But I'm going to go and click export just like so. And then it's going to go and go to another pop up. I'm going to not touch these stuff at all and just go and click export. And then it's going to go and as you can see, export it. And we just have to wait a minute or two. And then it's going to go and save it. If it's a more complicated image, it will take longer to export. However, now I want to go and show you how to go and save the image for if you want to go and edit it at a later point. So to do that, come up to file just like so, and then go and click on save as just here. And then you need to choose where the file is going to be. And you want to make sure you've named it something you're going to remember as well. So mine example, and then you need to make sure it's got the XCF file name. It's going to have that by default, but just don't change it. As essentially XCF means GIMP can reopen it and we can continue editing at a later point. So then I'm going to go and click on save. Then as you can see, it's now saving it. And that's literally it, guys. That is how you can go and use GIMP. If you found this video useful, please consider subscribing to the channel. Leave a like for more content just like this. I look forward to catch you in the next one. Peace.